stands where you are and just be worship. Let's worship him. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good, so good, you've been so good, so good, you've been so good, so good to me. Come on, all over the building. So good. You've been so good, Lord, you are good. You are good. Yes, you are. You've been better than I can praise. I owe you, I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I why? Because you've been so good. Lord, you've been good. Yes, you have. You've been better than I can praise you. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough, God. Better than good to me. So many doors, so many doors, so many ways, so many ways, so many times, so many times you feel me. Even better than good to me. So many doors, so many doors you open, so many ways, so many times, so many times you feel me. Better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. Yes, God. You've been better than good to me. Jesus, see you've been so good. I got a right to praise it because you've been so good. If it's been good to you, shout hallelujah. 
you've been Hallelujah So good He kept me in my right mind You've been Oh So good Oh See that the Lord is good, so good. Even if I had ten thousand tongues, it wouldn't be enough. You've been Hallelujah, so good. Just think about it. Just think about his goodness for a couple of seconds. When you begin to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, take this opportunity to tell our great big God, thank you for being so good. Come on and give him praise in this moment. Hollins, he's been good. Leon, he's been good. Cokers, he's been good. Vons, he's good. He's good. So good. Amen. If you can stand for the reading of the word. Thank God for his spirit in this place. Hallelujah. We're going to read. Yeah, I'm... I'm just a guest here. God owns this house, so if you want to worship him, go on and worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 139, and we're going to read 1 through 16, and then we're going to skip down to the 23rd and the 24th verses. And I'm reading from the NIV. It reads, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost beings. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Then we're going to skip down to the 23rd. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. 
and for a subject, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Subtopic, where you are, I am there. You may be seated. A couple of weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me in the middle of the night. Have you ever been awakened and you know that you have been ministered to and preached to by God? It's such a good feeling. God said, daughter, wherever you are, I'm already there. Immediately, I knew that there can be a physical place and there can be an emotional place. In other words, saints, no matter what you are facing, no matter what challenges, blessings, promotions, trials, wherever you are physically, spiritually, emotionally, God is already there. You're in Sunday, August 8th, worrying and concerned about August 9th, when our God is already there. We want you to understand and know your relationship with God. Knowing gives you peace of mind. Because if your mental health is not good, it will affect every part of your being. I'll say it this way, how you view God will impact every area of your life. If you make God bigger, your problems will become smaller. You'll feel better if you know with confidence that the Lord is there. When something happens, sometimes we pray as though God did not know. We, we pray as though it caught God by surprise. But the fact of the matter is, he has already seen your tears. He has already enjoyed your laughter. He's not surprised because he is there. He is our pe past, present, and who is to come. Verse 16 says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Can anyone attest to the fact that if God had not been there, if he had not helped you, rescued you, walked with you, the result would have been different. So again, we will look at another compound word that represents the relationship that we should have with God. Last week, Pastor Gerard preached such a powerful healing message, Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. I received a text message from one of our members who God is taking through another healing. And she said, hi, Pastor, I'm doing well. I'm believing to see. We're asking you to take these names of God and like ointment, apply them to your life. Amen. Repeat after me, Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. The, Lord the Lord is there. The term the Lord is there is first introduced in Ezekiel when it describes what the New Jerusalem and the temple will look like. Ezekiel 48 states that his glory is in this place. Why? Because the Lord is there. Throughout the word of God and in every book of the Bible, we can see whenever there was trouble and when there was triumph, guess what? The Lord was there. He is not just a God of your trouble. Don't think of God as just your uh, run to when trouble is around. Right. If you have a relationship with him, you know him to be the one who helps with your successes your triumphs, your achievements, just life. He numbered the hairs on our head. He is interested and want us to include him in the totality of our being. Make him Lord of your life. And, in, uh, and if you research every book of the Bible, there will always be a story that we can identify with to show us without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is there. He was with Adam and Eve, naked in the garden. He was with them when they faced the death of their second-born child at the hand of their first child. He was with Moses in the Nile River as a baby. He was with him when he committed murder. And he was there with him when he called him and restored him. He was with Abraham and Sarah when they laughed at the idea of them having their child in their old age. And he was there with them when they circumcised this promise. Amen. He was with Elijah when he called down fire from heaven. And he was with Elijah when he went through a depression and ran and hid from a woman that had no power. He was with David when he lost everything and even his army turned against him and he had to encourage himself in the Lord. And he was there with David when he was king and brought back the glory to Jerusalem and danced all out of his clothes. All right. 
He was there when a virgin girl was about to be put away from what was perceived as sin. And he was there when she gave birth to the Son of God. And Jehovah Shammah was with his own son when he performed his first miracle. And he was with him at Calvary when he gave up the ghost. And he was with him and he was him when he got up with all power. Every book, God is there. And if you pick your own book, your own story, our own autobiography, Pastor Gerard and Asham, and look at chapter after chapter, ups and downs and detours, and say, I made it through this. I accomplished this. I overcame this because I was not in it alone. That's right. But every page, God was there. Everything. Jehovah Shammah was there. Yeah. How do I know? Well, you're here today. Right. You're alive to hear it today. You made it, and not only that, you are prospering because God was there. Shout amen if he was there. Amen. God has written your book, and if you're born again, your book has a happy ending. If you're born again, That's right. you have already won. Like you have the victory. We just need to walk out every chapter. Right. The forward and the epilogue and every page in between has already been written. And just a spoiler alert, you are a winner because God is with you. You will make it. Your life is blessed because God is with you. Any winners in the house and out there. And today we're going to look at Psalm 139 as a background scripture to show you through the word, this compound word for our God is there and help you to apply it to your life. You ready to dig in? All right. We will break down four parts in Psalm 139. Verses one through six will explain how the all-knowing God knows me, his knowledge. Verses seven through 12 will explain how God is with me, his presence. And verses 13 through 16 will explain how he formed me, his power. And verses 23 through 24 will reference his holiness. Right. I want you to repeat after me again, Jehovah Shammah knows me. Jehovah Shammah is with me. Jehovah Shammah formed me. And Jehovah Shammah is holy. We want you to walk today out of these doors knowing that God cares and he is concerned about all of our being. Amen. You serve a God who is there. There is no place in life that the God who created you has not already been. He is just waiting on you to arrive and you will. I want you to keep your Bible open to Psalm 139. We're going to reference it. But before I introduce the beginning verses, let's go to the very end of this psalm. Right. David had been accused of something that he was not guilty of. Have you ever been accused of something you were not guilty of? Amen. Sure you have. We all have. What's so am amazing is that we all have faults and shortcomings, and sometimes we get mad because we're accused of something that's not even in our character something we never would have thought about. Not guilty of that, guilty of some things, but not that. Let me say it this way, you can believe what they say about you, or you can believe what God knows about you. Right. Then on the flip side, sometimes what they say about you is better than what God knows about you. But God is not like man. Man will abandon you when they know things. But God created us knowing that we would fail and knowing that we would come back to him. Your loved one is coming back. God is with them. Have you ever, this is, this is before God changed you, and for some it's still applied today. Have you ever been accused of something and in your mind and in your spirit you want to shout because you're saying, that's not true? But if you had known me before, you just don't know how God has changed me and delivered me. You don't know me. You think you know me. You don't know me, but God does. He knows the good and the bad, and he still calls us unto himself. Yes, God. But for some, every now and then, 
there's a struggle in the heart. That's why David laid it on the line in this psalm. He did something that many of us will not do because we think our wrong is right. And we think that we've arrived, but none of us. No, not one has achieved to the point that God does not need to work on us and in us. We still get mad in traffic. All right. We're about to blow up if someone pull into that parking space that we have been waiting on. And so this accusation got to David, but instead of just sitting on it, he invited the God that is already there to search him. David prayed a prayer, it was a prayer request, and directly to the Lord because he knew that no one knew his heart like God. Sometimes you don't know what is in your heart until it's tested. That's right. We saw that last year, how quickly the church became divided. Didn't say the believers, but the church became divided over politics. David said in the closing prayer in Psalm 139, 23, and 24, put it, uh, you don't have to put it on the screen, we'll keep it. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. He invited God to a place that we sometimes try to keep hidden. Why would he invite God into a place where he already exists? Because the believer David made a conscious decision. That's right, that's good. He was intentional in inviting him to be there. We know God is there in a passive way, but what if every day that you wake up, you ask God, please be here to constantly do three things. Know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts. And after searching me, do two things, see me, and lead me. Right. But if you don't mean it, don't pray it. If you, don't want to, if you want to stay the same way and get the same results, then don't pray it. Don't play with God. David wrote this song because he had been accused of idolatry. The one thing that David was accused of, he did not do. And that was idolatry. Idolatry is having another God before our God to worship an object as a God. He was not guilty of that. David was a man after God's own heart. He did sin. He committed adultery. He went to war without consulting God. He was responsible for a death. He had blood on his hand. But what he did not do, he was accused of, and he said, search me, O oh God. He had already dealt with the sin in his life. Don't you just love it when you've already dealt with sin in your life? but somebody wants to go back to chapter three when your life is in chapter 23. I'm not that anymore. I've dealt with that. I want to give an FYI for marriage. If a spouse was guilty of something in the past, and if you've reconciled it, don't hold that chapter against them. I have forgiven Pastor Gerard for buying me that vacuum cleaner way back then. It's, it's just a part of your testimony. You're in a new chapter. You got to deal with that chapter. And David says, search me, O oh God. I'm not guilty of that. I've done some things, but not that. You were there when I sinned, and you were there when the prophet Nathan came to me, exposed my sin, and I repented. Let, let, let me speak to somebody today, just like you want others to forget your past sins and transgressions, you need to let it go as well. You need to forgive yourself. Stop holding yourself hostage over your past mistakes, your past sins. And if you've repented, which means to change your ways and ask for forgiveness, then do yourself a favor and forgive you. Tell yourself, I'm no longer in that chapter in my life. Yes, it's a part of my book, but I'm past that now. I'm in a new chapter. Somebody give God glory for moving me to another chapter. But, but David said, if there is anything else in my heart, search me while we are here, God. Search me and know my heart. Try me. In other words, allow a situation to occur that I can prove that it is not who I am and not only my actions, but my, not my thoughts. 
Because sometimes we can say and do a thing and our thoughts are totally different from our actions. Right. His prayer went further and said, see if there be any wickedness in me. Because he knew God, he knew that there would be something in him that is not like God and he hit, ends it with lead me in the way of everlasting. The word of God tells us that there is a way that seems right unto men, but the end thereof is destruction. But David said, I, I know I am a man. I know I have faults. So, so God, I'm asking you to lead me in the way. Not my way, but your way of everlasting. That's the end of the chapter. That is the foundation of this passage. So let's go back to verse 1. Remember 1 through 6 explains how he knows me. Know in Greek means to understand completely. And God is not just looking at our existence. David wrote, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit, when I rise, you perceive my thoughts afar off. You see, God's GPS is better than any that you can have on any device. Some people are concerned about being tracked. The moment you pick up a cell phone or device, you're tracked. Just say a word and watch it start popping up in your feed. In fact, your devices emulate the first six verses. That device know when I sit and rise. Right. My going and my coming right. discerns my going out and lying down. But the tracking in your phone doesn't care where you go, how you sit, when, where, and with whom you lie down. It's just collecting information so that it can share the information. But God is interested in every part of you, not just to collect, but to aid you, to keep you, and to bless you. This, this passage is not the universal you. This is the personal you. And in the fifth verse, he says, you hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. The normal sense of hedge or him in the Bible is of a protective barrier. God hedged David in on every side so that nothing could come to David unless it first passed through God's permission. What was true for David is true for all of us who trust in the Lord. He is Jehovah Shammah, and because he is, he searches for you so that you're never out of range. A signal is never lost. Right. He looks into our history and tells us when you went there, that was not good for you. Right. When you laid there, you almost didn't get up. When you said that caused, that caused life to leap into your bones. You are familiar with all my ways, which lets you know God cares about every part of you. Search me, God, and thank you for being there. And then the psalmist goes into the portion that the all-knowing God sees me in verses 7 through 12. And we should take comfort in these passages that no matter how low or how high we go, guess what? God is there. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? There is no hiding place. If I go up to heaven... You are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dark, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. He said, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. No matter how dark we make the room, no matter how far we go away from our address, God is there. The omnipresent God is where I am. Now, if you're in sin, you, you, you can't hide from God. You're, you're just hiding from man and hiding from the police and hiding from your family, but not from God. And that is why David surrendered. He esteemed God above every opinion and above every condemnation. 
People change in what they think about you, but our God knows us. He knows the depth of our heart. But David gave a statement right. of surrender. He had been in a hiding place and found out that God still loved him and still wanted to use him. That's why David said, I don't even try anymore. Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up or if I go down, you are there. Whether it is Sheol, the grave, or even if you go to a low place called depression or anxiety, he is there. In Acts, God speaks and says that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. There is no place on the earth, in our bodies, nor in our minds, that God is not there. It's a scary thought if you're living a hypocritical lifestyle, yes. but it is a comforting thought knowing that God cares enough about you that if you are the height of your happiness, if you're living a blessed and fulfilled life, I am there. And even if you make a decision to fall or if you fail and if you go low, I am there to restore you. He loves you so much that the darkness cannot get dark enough for the light to come in and find you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Everybody didn't get saved walking down the aisle in church. Somebody got God had to find in extreme places. We used to sing a song growing up, don't let him catch you on the barroom floor. Right. And so and show you that I love you enough that I came to see about you, even when you were trying to hide from me. You looked all right to everyone else, but I know your struggles because I am there in your struggle with you. Even when your mind told you to take your life, even when the laws of low was not low enough, even when grief tried to take you down, even when you hit rock bottom, you still fell on the rock, which is Christ. God was there. Yes, God. And just him being there gave you enough courage, enough conviction, enough hope to get back up and come back on the Lord's side. You, you, you just needed one sign. You, you thought that if you escaped to the far side of the country, another city or a town yeah. like Jonah, that God would change his mind about your calling, that you can run from your assignment. God said, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Even in my success, I can't stay there alone. I need you there with me, God. God is always with you. When you go to surgery, a doctor can put you to sleep, sleep but only God can wake you. Right. A doctor can cut you, but only God can heal you. Amen. A lawyer can defend your case, but only God can give you blessed assurance. That's right. A job can give you a check, but only God can provide. Right. He'll stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. Right. A bed can help you to sleep, but only God can give you rest. A joke can make you laugh, but only God can give you joy. God is with you, and he loves you, and he knows you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He is thy shade upon thy right hand. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Lo, I am with you always. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Somebody shout, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. In fact, he's here right now, for the word of God tells us where two or three are gathered in his name. He's there in the midst of us. Thank you for being here. And I'm mighty glad that this is the kind of God we serve. He will not just be with us, but he chases after us, yeah. searches our hearts. He, he knows us and he calls us back from the edge, from giving up, from quitting, from fainting, for canceling our future and our plans. And he searches after us because he loves us. Right. How many people actually know you? Would you say 10, 5, 2, 1? This is personal. All-powerful, all-knowing God is saying, 
I know you. The reason that the devil knows us is because we tell him our business. All right. We tell him what we are capable and incapable of. But God knows us because he searches our hearts. The innermost parts of us. He made us and he knows that what you do is not who you are. Even if it's a great career, where you go is not your destiny. Your disease is not your demise. David had everything. Houses, land, authority, riches. But in all that, his greatest desire after being rescued from Saul, from hiding in caves, attacked by his own children, going to a dark place of sin, being promoted and elevated and winning wars, his desire was for God to search him and to test him. I'm not what I used to be. And I'm not what I'm going to be, God. Just be with me. You are my Jehovah Shammah. And like the old folks used to say, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. And I want to be whole. That one glimmer of light in a dark place will let you know I am here. One word of confirmation will let you know I am here. A prophetic word that only you and God knew about will let you know I am here. You are never alone, never alone. Somebody shout, I am never alone. Never. You never have to fight battles alone. You won't go through trials alone. You won't get to the top alone. You have a God that sees cares, searches, and keeps. And in the third part, remember verses 1 through 6 explain how the all-knowing God knows me. Verses 7 through 12 explain how God is with me. Amen. And verses 13, 13 through 16, let's explain how he formed me. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That's what I say when I look in the mirror every morning. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. David continues to prove his case, yes. proving that no one knows me like God, and he has been there wherever I am, he is. He is telling his audience to further prove his case that God, you created me, you put me together. You knit me in my mother's womb. I, I don't care how many EPTs you have, how early you found out that you're carrying a child. There is a secret time frame that only God knows when you were made. All right. And in that moment when it is between heaven and the womb, God was there. Before the devil could whisper what you will not be or what you would not do, God was there knitting you together. Jeremiah 1 even tells you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. And he knit me and you. He created our inmost being. You are an overcomer because he knit you together. You act better, think better, perform better. You talk like you do, you walk like you do, you're blessed like you are because before you knew you, God put himself into you and made you desire him. And when he put you together, what he created in you and how he shaped you, he did it well. Give God glory for his creation, all of you, all of you. He did, did it well, celebrate the God that made you. Why don't you just celebrate the God that made you? You make your home environment better. You make your church better. You make your school better, your place of employment. Yes, you. God looks good on all of you. You are appreciated, you are loved, yes, 
all of you. He was there. And because God was there, you will be what he called you to be. You will have what he says you can have. And you will do what he said you can do. He was there before your mother and father even knew each other. Before negative thoughts and negative things could get a grip on you. Before he is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, and he is with you now. Lift up your head, walk upright, know that you will not fail. You are walking with God. The psalmist said, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. It is one of the most quoted passages in the canticles, but its intent is not to brag on us, but to brag on the God who made us and took the time to make what he made good. So David said, your works are wonderful. So when you put yourself down, you're putting your creator down. When you look in the mirror, look at a reflection, have low self-esteem, you're telling yourself that the God that was there before you knew you did something wrong. No, he did not. Your mind needs to catch up and your spirit man should agree that I'm gonna praise you because I am fearfully and wonder. He didn't make a mistake in me. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You were not there. You did not choose the color of your hair, your skin, your home, your intellect, not even your parents, your abilities. God did. And the God that was there is here now to stand by what he created. I'm talking about God being with me. When I was made in the secret place, when God put me together in the depths of the earth, God, you were there. So how do I apply all of this to my life? Amen. We want you to walk away having confidence, a blessed assurance. We want you to feel taller and stronger, feel good about the you that God created and not waste another moment nor opportunity. So how do I apply it? You apply by knowing that wherever you are, God is there. And even before you can get there, he is already there. Stop fearing, stop worrying, stop sinning, stop doubting, stop complaining, and know with confidence that the same God that made the earth, that separated the firmament from the firmament, the same God that was with the disciples in the boat and calmed the sea, the same God that rescues, delivers, heals, is your God. And your God stands besides you, walks with you. In fact, Jesus told his disciples, I'm going away, but I will not leave you comfortless. You ought to look over where you're sitting and tell God, thank you for being with me. Yeah, he walked in here with you. He's going to walk out of these doors with you. He's getting in your car with you. He's going home with you. You are never alone. You are never alone. According to the 16th verse, God already has your days written in his book. Amen. Just keep going where God is. That's right. Put one foot in front of another. Cancel every negative thought, every negative action, and keep going and growing towards the Lord who is there. So you ought to go on to that doctor's appointment. God is there. Go on to the grief counseling. God is already there. Get the surgery. God is there. Drew, go on to the season of football. God is there. Sean, go on to that appointment. God is there. Families that have to go to court, go on to court. God is there. Go on to that interview. God is there. When your kids go to their college campuses, God is there. When they get on the school bus, or drive to campus, God is there. Don't worry about your parents, God is there. Feel free to get the counseling, God is there. You will excel, God is there. Go to the meeting, God is there. Stop worrying about your family, God is there. When you go back to work, God is there. Get dressed for that interview. Go, God is there. Go to the new city. Go to the new home, the new promotion, the new circumstance. He is there wherever you are. We serve Jehovah Shema, the God who is there. 
the God who has already prepared a place for you, your promise keeper, your savior, your God. Go on and go. Pastor Ross said, go on and write the date in the calendar. It's already there. Because Jehovah Shammah will be with you. And you ought to lean over again and tell Jehovah Shammah, thank you that you, Lord, you are there. And you ought to give him glory. Give him honor. And give him praise. He's there. He's there. Come on and give him glory for being there.